New developments tonight in a story that we have been following closely here on Prime. A new federal lawsuit targeting Oxford High School saying school officials did not do enough to prevent a deadly shooting there last year. Six families in all are now suing. You'll remember four students were killed and seven others injured by then 15-year-old Ethan Crumbly. Crumbly returned to class after being in a counselor's office for a disciplinary meeting with his parents. In the new lawsuit, they say that was part of the problem, one of the many, many warning signs that they say was ignored, protocol that was not followed with a student that they call suicidal. The bottom line is the lawsuit claims school officials failed their students. It's been an emotional week for Justin Schilling's family. Justin was one of four gunned down nearly six months ago. Two of our four students who were taken from us this year happened to be pretty outstanding seniors. And they would have been present with us this evening and graduating with their classmates. We would like to take some time this evening to honor those two students and give them the special recognition they deserve. He and Madison Baldwin were seniors and were to graduate last week. Justin and Madison didn't walk the stage to get their diplomas. Instead, their parents accepted for them. <laughs> Justin's parents haven't talked publicly about the shooting until now. They've been grieving, trying to cope day by day. It's been 174 days since he was murdered. And it feels like it was just last week. The family wanted to get through graduation before this next step. We're beyond heartbroken. We're traumatized. And we're devastated. And we are not okay. Everything is so hard for us right now. It's like pushing through mud. This new lawsuit alleges warning signs were ignored. Charging employees ignored protocol for students experiencing suicidal ideation, that staff had been trained on how to deal with the issue, and that Ethan Crumbly met the standards. How they violated their own policy by sending a suicidal kid back to class without making sure that he didn't have any dangerous instrumentation and weapons near him which would include his backpack that the associate uh, dean of students handed him without looking at. That obviously, according to the police, they believe that the gun was already in it with the uh, ammunition and, of course, uh, Crumbly's manifesto, 30-some pages of uh, his writings, apparently. The school district has not commented on this latest lawsuit. It wasn't lost on many that while other families gathered to hold graduation parties, the Schilling family is filing a lawsuit for answers to their son's death. He impacted so many people in 17 short years and uh, never bragged about it, worked tirelessly. His grades were outstanding. You know, he was almost too good for this world. And Johnson hopes with this lawsuit he can get governmental immunity changed. Michigan is one of many states that stops anyone from suing a public school or its employees. He thinks this case could end up going to the Michigan Supreme Court uh, and may actually change that law. I want to bring in Dave Ehrenberg now. Uh, he is the state attorney for Palm Beach County, Florida. He has been following this case from the very beginning. Dave, um, this is one of those school shootings that I, uh, I went out to covering just days after it happened. And I will tell you one thing that stood out to me in Oxford that I didn't notice at many of these other shootings that I've covered is the school district immediately shut the media down. We got there. They wouldn't answer any questions. They even fled the district offices, put signs up on the windows and said, no one here to answer questions. And there was this feeling from the community that they weren't going to answer for anything. And now we've got this this lawsuit. Um, do you think this is more about more than just a payout? I mean, could this actually bring us some answers? Could the school district be forced now to answer so many of these questions? Good evening, Brian. Yes, because of these lawsuits, there's the discovery process and answers will be forthcoming. But the school district has not handled themselves uh, very well here. I think they've made matters worse by locking down a bunker mentality. One thing, though, that has come out of these lawsuits already, the school district has agreed to have an independent uh, firm come in to review the procedures. They have resisted that for some time. They also resisted having the attorney general's office come in 
and have an independent investigation. But now, because of these lawsuits, the school district did allow an independent group to come in to start evaluating things. And that is a step in the right direction. Yeah, step in the right direction. Finally, we're going to get an independent investigation. But the bottom line, Dave, at least to me, that has always stood out to me, bottom line, they sent Ethan Crumbly back to the classroom. They didn't search him, and he had the gun in his backpack. Do you think that that's going to really be the focal point of this lawsuit? It is, and it should be, because this whole tragedy could have been averted by just someone who knew this kid had serious problems, just asking to check the backpack, or by refusing to send Ethan Crumley back into the classroom. Remember, the school district employees, the school administration, wanted Ethan Crumley to go home with his parents, but the parents refused to take him home. And so they let him go back into class, and just a short time later, the tragedy ensued. So yes, their hands are not clean in this, but it's different between doing something wrong and doing something wrong criminally and civilly. Now, from a criminal standpoint, I don't expect any criminal charges to be filed against a school district. The burden is too high. You've got to prove things beyond a reasonable doubt. And here it looks like some negligence. On a civil basis, you could sue them as is being done, and you only need to prove it by a preponderance of the evidence. Is it more likely than not that the school district breached its duty of care to the families of the victims. And that's why you'll see more of these civil lawsuits. But still, these lawsuits can be tough to win because these school district employees have a measure of sovereign immunity. And that's what they're trying to get the courts to change. And you're saying, Dave, that you don't believe it rises to the level of criminal. But if you talk to those parents, I mean, you've got four dead kids and you've got school employees that sent Ethan Crumbly back to the classroom. Uh, you don't think that that could be some kind of criminal negligence? Criminal negligence, Brian, is much higher than regular negligence. And to me, the biggest difference here is that the parents of Ethan Crumbly knew that he had access to a gun. After all, they're the ones who bought him the gun. And yet they didn't even bother to search the backpack. They didn't even ask their son if he had the gun. The school district did not know he had access to a gun. Yes, they knew he was searching for ammunition. They knew he was a ticking time bomb in some respects, but they didn't know he had access to the gun. And that to me is the difference between a civil lawsuit, which is happening, and a criminal charge, which I don't think will. And that's why I think the district attorney in that area has not filed charges against anyone except for Ethan Crumbly and his parents. Yeah, that's right. And, and you keep bringing up the Crumbly parents. I mean, let's not forget about them. Remember, Dave, they went on uh, the, the run. They were hiding out, I believe it was in Detroit, uh, in, in a warehouse when they were finally tracked down. But they are also named in this lawsuit, both of Ethan Crumbly's parents. Um, what does that mean? I mean, they're still in jail, obviously. So I'd imagine this has got to be the least of their problems. But what does it mean that they're named? Well, they're going to face civil liability, too. But what happens, Brian, is that Folks like the Crumbly parents are what you call judgment proof. They don't have many assets. In fact, the few assets they have, they seem to spend on their attempted escape. Remember, they withdrew thousands of dollars in money from their son's ATM account, and they try to use it to flee. But they don't have a lot, and that's why, yeah, they're being sued. But I think the families are not expecting to get much from them. They want to get something from the school district, which actually has insurance policies, which has a fund to pay out in situations like this. Uh, but the Crumblies are, to me, uh, the worst because they're the ones who not only enabled their kid, they bought him the gun. And when their, their kid was crying out for help, the mother LOL'd him. And then when the kid was alone in the jail, they fled. And then when the parents went, went and hired themselves some private lawyers to defend themselves, what they do? They let their son have a public defender. That's the kind of parents the Crumblies are. Oh, yeah. And you've been following the case. I mean, they're making hand signals and they're trying to talk to each other in court uh, in their jumpsuits and have been getting in sorts of all trouble with the with the judge. Uh, one other thing I wanted to ask you, why is this case in federal court? I think a lot of people would expect it would be in state court since, you know, since it happened in, in a public school in Michigan. Why does it rise to the level of federal? Well, there already is litigation against school officials in state court. This is different because it's in federal court. And I think the reason why, Brian, is that, and I read the complaint, 
it's brought under Section 1983, which is the civil rights uh, statute under federal law. So it's going to be tough to prove that these government officials violated the family's civil rights, the civil rights of the victims. But the reason why it's being brought in federal court is that that civil rights statute also has an attorney's fee provision, which enables the plaintiffs, even if they win just a dollar, to get attorney's fees, and that will motivate lawyers to file in federal court as opposed to state court where attorney's fees are much harder to get. Uh, makes sense. Okay, so the attorney's fees come into play. Dave, uh, you're always so good at breaking these things down. Thanks so much for being on tonight. Thanks for having me, Ryan. Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.